Go to BigManComics.com for the best in action, adventure, entertainment. We are winning the culture war, guys. It's been two weeks since the glorious re-election, the greatest political comeback in the history of America. Donald J. Trump is your president. Whether you like it or not, snowflakes. Guys, we're winning the culture war, and I'm going to tell you what in the hell is going on. Let's bring this up here. Guys, two weeks ago, these two clowns, Jazz Hands and DEI Hire, the drunk DEI woman and Captain Jazz Hands, they almost became leader and co-leader of this great nation. And that would have just, that would have been, you could, that would have been curtains for America. That would have been enough. Did anyone ever see Tim Walls and not be disgusted within the millisecond they saw him? I didn't know who he was. I'd never heard of him. And the first time I saw him when they announced him, I was like, ugh, that guy is, I won't say it on YouTube, that guy is not someone I trust around short human beings. I'll say it that way. Um, but yeah, we were just minutes away. How could they have not won the election when they offered nothing but hatred for America, men, Christianity, tradition, uh, good entertainment, great video games, movies, music. That's all the left offered us is to destroy everything we love, everything that's awesome, everything that makes life worth living. They hate it and you're a racist for liking it. And they had these celebrities come out and tell you about it. They had these jackass millionaire, uh, celebrities who, uh, they don't care that milk is $5 a gallon. They don't, you know what I mean? They don't care that they can go to the grocery store and get one or two bags and it's $100. They don't care because they're filthy rich for pretending on screen. So they come out here and piss in your boot and tell you it's raining. And uh, it's good. It's good that it failed. These people are degenerate and disgusting and uh, never been a fan. I'm not a sycophant for Hollywood types at all. It's, it's never impressed me. You know, I've met some good people in Hollywood, some of my friends, Matthew and Dean, but it has nothing to do with them being actors and it has everything to do with them being men. Family men, men of God, and all that. So, uh, Ariba Derchi, D E I Kamala. And, uh, oh, yeah, then the Avengers came out. And I, and I have said for years before it was trendy to say the Marvel Cinematic Universe sucks. I was right. You can all apologize to me. That humor, that Joss Whedon quip a minute, is the death of humor. It's terrible humor. I thought you said you knew these guys. I know him from work. It's the worst. It's a, it's a crime. It should be illegal. It's so bad, this stuff. And uh, I'm sorry you guys all watched it and loved it. It's terrible. The movies are terrible. And uh, I'm glad they humiliated themselves to, uh, to support the DEI hire. But guys, as I said a minute ago, we are winning. We are winning. We are winning that culture war. All athletes everywhere doing the Trump. Guys, just do the Trump right now. Just do it. It's a little staccato. You do it. You do it, you give a little look, you do it, and look how much better you feel doing the Trump. You know what I mean? So we are winning the culture war, and I'm going to tell you why. Because here's this garbage here, right? Ugh, jazz hands. Many of you know about Dragon Age, the Veil Guard, and it was supposed to be this huge release. And I know someone personally, like I know them, one degree of separation, that uh, worked for a company that sells a lot of Dragon Age stuff, and it ain't good. It ain't good. I won't go to detail. I want to betray confidences, but I know me. And I know the person directly. It's not someone who knows someone I know. It's direct. And this thing is a clunker. No moolah. Not making anything. Not moving. Not making any numbers. And it sucks because it's DEI, woke, SJW garbage. And these creeps that make this stuff, these Hollywood creeps, these leftist Americators think they're going to crap all over our culture and then get us to pay for it. They're like, hey, what if we made a video game? where we lectured you and told you you were awful because you liked families and you loved God and you loved America and you liked being masculine if you're a man and you like being feminine if you're a woman and you love tradition and you appreciated your ancestors and so on and so forth and you liked patriotism. What if we told you you were evil for doing that? So they try to sell us this crap for long enough and people have had an ass full. People have had enough of that. And uh, the Game Awards, this thing's coming up and of course it's infected with wokeness, all the judging. But strangely enough, Dragon Age The Veil Guard endures brutal Game Awards shutout, as it should. They should have, in Hollywood, they have the Razzies for the worst movie of the year. They should have that in, uh, they should have that in video games. I don't know if that exists. Check out my boy Stuttering Craig over there on Side Scrollers with the amazing Blab. They're doing the real Game Awards, which I think is hilarious. But yeah, this game had uh, lectures about 
uh, getting their non-binary words and pronouns correct or whatever. And uh, if you got the pronouns wrong, then you did some push-ups to punish yourself and very creepy sex scenes like this. I saw the video of this, just disgusting, weird stuff. And uh, it deserves to be snubbed for awards. It deserves to be ridiculed. And I'll say this, after the Trump victory, that is crossing a threshold. We have crossed a threshold culturally where that was the day Woke died. Woke was losing for like the last two years. You've seen the Woke movies fail, the Woke TV shows fail and get canceled, the Woke video games losing billions, Woke studios shutting down. Woke is losing Trump's mind-blowing popular vote. And yes, he won the popular vote. They're trying to play with numbers with the popular vote. He won more people than Kamala. That's the popular vote. Nice try saying he didn't win it. He won the electoral the Congress, the Senate, the judiciary, everything is coming up Millhouse. It's all Trump, baby. And that is blowing leftist minds because they're like, but I'm always right. I'm never wrong about anything. And it's like, baby, you're wrong about everything. You live in an upside down funhouse mirror world. So it's nice to see this stuff BTFO'd, as they say, and uh, not get any of the accolades they thought they deserved because they do deserve nothing but scorn and ridicule. But I will tell you guys this, as we cross through this epoch, as we cross through this threshold, of one age to another. We are leaving the Obama woke BLM age. We left it on Tuesday night, November 5th, when Trump had his resounding, smashing mandate of a victory. And I would tell you this, there are weak people on the, and you don't even have to be a Republican or conservative, because I know Democrats that hate this woke shit too. If you're anti-woke, you're a good person. Always be anti-woke, always be anti-communist, always be anti-socialist. They're disgusting ideologies of murder and death and anti-humanism. And uh, they're just disgusting ideologies of resentment. Always be against that stuff. But now's not the time to be nice. Now's not the time to come to the table and, oh, we forgive you. They're just going to do it again. You saw what they did during the lockdown. You saw what they did, what they want to do to kids, what they want to do to the border, what they want to do to religion, Christianity specifically, what they want to do to heritage. They want to destroy it. They hate you and they hate your culture because they're envious, because they're losers, and you have something beautiful your ancestors gave you. So now's not the time to be nice to these people. I mock them, and I ridicule them, and I ain't stopping. You know, I want to I want to break their will. I don't want to do anything illegal. I'm not going to do anything physical and nothing like that, but I want them to know their ideology is shit, and I'm aware of it, and so are you. I want them to know that. Um, like this. This is that Star Wars Outlaws game. It was an utter failure. Let me pick something up I dropped. We've been over this one a million times. That woman on the left is beautiful in real life. I don't know who she is, Humberly Gonzalez. And that is her on the right. And that's what they do when they 3D model her because these woke people hate beauty. They hate success. They hate goodness. They hate love. They hate family. They hate tradition. They hate anything beautiful out of resentment because they're ugly losers. You know, again, look, I mean, look at her. She's pretty stunning. There's a reason she's uh, doing modeling professional. And Look what they do to her in the game on purpose, as if we don't have the technology to make this character look just like her, as if we don't. She should be able to sue them. I'm no attorney, that's not legal advice, but in my non-lawyer opinion, she should be able to sue them for doing that to her, because it's bad for her resume. When she tries to go get other acting jobs and other video game cartoon, she can't show them this game as part of her resume. Like, hey, look what I did. This is crap, this thing. And it's not her fault, she was just the voice actress. And, um... But it, it's, it's not all bad news, guys. I mean, again, look what they did to her. And yet somehow this gentleman, they were able to mimic him digitally. On the left is a digital representation of him in another Star Wars game. And on the right is a representation of him uh, in real life. That's a real photograph. Let me move this up here. Sorry. One, give me one second here. That's how he looks in real life and on the right. And that's how he looks in the game. Somehow they were able to nail him perfectly actually make him a touch touch more dashing in the game. And here, they, it looks like her face caught on fire and they put it out with a soccer cleat on the right in the game. This is terrible. Again, i not a lawyer, not legal advice. She should be able to sue them. Um, but we get into this article here in Forbes. Oh, it's so bad that, uh, ooh, I was spoiling the, the punchline of what I'm doing here. Um, Forbes is talking about it's not just these nominations. This is in regard to Veilguard. However, it is very noticeable that the clock is still kicking on EA releasing any sales numbers or player count totals almost three weeks after launch. All we have is Steam concurrent data, which was a decent 85,000 near launch. That ain't decent. Not for a thing like Dragon Age, which is, you know, well over a decade old, has a huge built-in fan base. 
That is not good, 85,000, and it's nowhere near that. I read two days ago on the weekend, so I'm trying to move my mouse over here. I'm not looking at you all. I'll, I'll look back over there in a second when I'm able to grab the corner of this thing. But it's, it's like, it's bringing up this thing to stop me from grabbing the corner. It's very annoying. Um, oh my God, it doesn't want me to do this. Oh. Okay, anyway, we're going to just go for f from there. Um, they didn't want to release any numbers of players, uh, sales, money. Now, if you had a hit, wouldn't you just be publishing that? Five million copies sold, a kajillion billion dollars made. You would be touting that the holidays are coming and people love a winner. You know when the, a football team wins the Super Bowl, you'll see little kids wearing that shirt of that team, even if they don't live in that city. Because I remember the Giants won the Super Bowl in 1990 when I was 12. And like for a week, I loved the New York Giants. You know, I'm from Colorado. I'm a dyed-in-the-wool Bronco fan. But I was like, oh, Don Beebe, Jeff Hostetler, all these guys, you know, on the, on the Giants because they were a winner. So if this thing were a winner, they would be touting it. So what does that tell you? When somebody hides something... It means they have something to hide. I know that's a bit of a tautology. If I walked up to you guys with my hands behind my back and you said, what do you have there? And I said, nothing. And I wouldn't show my hands. I just had my hands on. And they're like, what are you, what are you doing? What do you got there? And I'm like, nothing. And you tried to step behind me and I turned. And I kept turning. So you could, do you think maybe I'm hiding something? So if they won't talk about the, uh, the they're releasing any sales number or player account totals, they're awful. And it's a humiliation because they wanted to be woke jackasses. As a man sows, so shall he reap. You can't escape it, guys. Sorry, that's how it is. You want to sow the stuff, you're going to reap it. Anyway, I'll end on this. <coughs> Donald Trump Jr. on X. Biological and objectively attractive women are allowed to win beauty pageants again. We are so back. And uh, I agree with him. A beautiful, I think, Danish woman, blonde, curvy with the light eyes. She's Miss Universe. And, and you saw a couple last year or the year before where uh, people who were not women were winning beauty pageants and like fat people were winning beauty pageants. And it doesn't make any sense. The, the pageant is about physical beauty, okay? Um, the fat person or the whatever, transgender, whatever, they are valid. They are, God made them. They matter. You know, they have families that love them. I'm not saying they're worthless. They're not. All human beings have value. But when we're saying who runs the fastest, that's objective. When we're saying who's the tallest, that's objective. Now, beauty is a bit in the eye of the beholder, but we know female beauty when we see it. Now, all of the women in the pageant, you know, we know they're beautiful, but this one happened to win. I'm sure some others could have won if the judging went differently, but you get my point, guys. We are back culturally, and it is just amazing. <laughs>